in this video, what I want to do is help you explore how to solve and graph absolute value inequalities. And we're not going to work with the most basic or the kind of most advanced, but just kind of some ones that you can definitely expect to see from your teacher inside the classroom, maybe on a test or a quiz um, to make sure that you kind of understand what exactly to do. So um, I'm going to work through three different examples um, to hopefully give you like a good foundation that you can kind of build off um, in your own class. So the first example that I just want to kind of deal with is when we have an absolute value that's being multiplied by a number. So in this case, I have nine times the absolute value of negative six H is going to be greater than a 90. So the main important thing we need to understand when we're solving absolute value equations or inequalities is to isolate the absolute value. So you can see in this case, my absolute value is being multiplied by nine. So we need to get rid of that. So I'm going to divide by nine on both sides. So now I have the absolute value of a negative six H is greater than 10. Okay, I can work with that, all right? Now, the thing that we need to understand about the absolute value is we need to take into account the positive as well as the negative solution. As well, I'm sorry, the positive and the negative case, all right? And then also remember that when we're dealing with inequalities, um, we we're, when we're dealing with absolute value inequalities, that's going to convert them into a what we call a compound inequality, which is either going to be an and or a or. Now, in this case, whenever you have the absolute value is greater than, a value that is going to create a or inequality, okay? So immediately, whenever I see the greater than, I just go ahead and write or, right? If it's less than or less than or equal to, it's going to be an and. So what you're simply going to do is first take the positive case, okay? So the positive case is just simply going to be everything without the absolute value. So negative 6h is going to be greater than 10. Or now we need to negate. Now we need to negate a case. So in negated case, you're going to keep the absolute value exactly the same. So that's going to be negative um, 6h. But now what we're going to do is going to flip the sign and then negate the other side of the inequality. All right. So now we have these two cases. And again, we're dealing with an or, meaning one of them has to be true, right? One could be true or the other could be true, but we're not looking for the intersection. That's going to be the and. So now what we're simply going to do is divide by a negative six on both sides. H is going to be greater than, uh, 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 uh. what happens when you divide by a negative, right? You have to flip the sign. So be very careful with that, right? So therefore H is going to be less than a negative six. So again, this can be reduced down, divide by two on the top and bottom. That can be reduced down to H is going to be less than a negative fourth, um, five thirds. Or now in this case, we're going to divide by negative six again on both sides. And when we go ahead and do that, I have an out an H is going to be greater than a positive five thirds. All right. Now, if you don't know how to graph five thirds, that's going to be um, somewhere between one and two, right? Because three goes into three and three divides into six two times, right? So three goes into five, somewhere in between one and two. And you can guess where it's going to be two thirds, you know, whatever, and try to get a decimal equivalent. That's, that's all fine. But when I'm just kind of graphing the inequality, um, then I'm not really going to be concerned with being like that precise. I just want to kind of know like, where exactly is this? So here's zero, right? And let's just say, I don't know, here's two, <laughs> right? You don't even need to, I don't even, a lot of times actually, I don't even write in the value. I just write where it is. So here is a negative five thirds. And again, that would have been negative two. Um, here's negative five thirds. And then here would be a positive five thirds. Okay. So H is greater than five thirds. So that's going to be, I guess you can understand like that's two, right? And this would be like negative two. Okay. So that's going to be all values to the right. And then over here, this is going to be H is less than negative five thirds. So that's going to be all values to the left. Okay. Now, if we wanted to write this in interval notation, what we can simply do is basically say, how far to the left is this graph going? And how far to the right is this graph going? And when is the graph not defined? Now we can kind of see that we have two sections here. So what we need to do is kind of graph the domain or write the domain kind of separately. So what I can first do is write negative infinity to a negative five thirds, right? Now, again, I'm using, I'm using parentheses because negative infinity is not defined for our, our inequality, nor is negative five thirds, right? Because it's less than, not less than or equal to. And then union here, and then I'll have a positive five thirds. And then that's going to go all the way to infinity. So there you go. That is it in interval notation. All right. So that's what happened when we have a, um, that's what we're going to do when we have, um, when we have something multiplied on the outside. What about if we um, have a couple of operations? What about if we have an operation on the inside as well as on the outside? Okay. So it's really important to use your, um, your order of operations, right? We got to make sure we isolate the absolute value. So the first thing I want you to do here is add a five to both sides. All right. We can't, un we can't subtract the two because that's inside of the absolute value. The only way to get rid of the absolute value is to create those two cases. Okay. So I see a lot of students of like, you know, sometimes they get confused. Like, how do I get rid of this absolute value? Well, you, to get rid of the absolute value, you create the two cases. Now this is absolute value of Y plus two is less than three plus five is going to be an eight right? So when we have this as a, 
um, y plus two is less than or equal to eight, that is now going to be an and inequality. So again, if I want to get rid of this absolute value, I now need to create my two cases. First case is the positive case. Y plus two is less than eight. And then and now my neg negative case. So that's going to be Y plus two. Flip the sign. Don't forget to do that. Is greater than a negative eight, right? So when we negate, just make sure you change that sign. All right. Um, now let's go ahead and use your inverse operations here. So I have a Y is going to be less than a positive six and then subtract two, subtract two. And a Y is going to be greater than a negative 10. Okay. Now it's very important when we're dealing with the and we're dealing with the intersection, right? Both cases have to be true. All right. So we're not just looking for one solution like we were with the or we're looking for both cases to be true. So when I go ahead and graph a number line here, all right. Um, so I have Y equals negative 10. So, you know, let's, I don't know, put zero here. So here's a negative 10. Let's put a six here. Okay. So it says Y is greater than um, negative 10. So greater than not greater than equal to. So that's going to be all values to the right, right? Anything to the right of negative 10 is going to be positive. When I have Y is less than six, that's going to be anything to the left of six is going to be positive. Now, when we're trying to understand this and we're looking for that intersection, where are they both true? You can see that it's only between the values of negative 10 and six, not at negative 10, right? Because negative 10 is undefined here, not at six because six is undefined here. It's only between the values of negative 10 and six. So how do, you can write your answer like as an inequality. You can also write it in interval notation. So to write an interval notation, we basically say the farthest left this graph goes is to negative 10. The farthest right that this graph goes is going to be a positive six, right? So therefore that is going to be our interval notation, um, our interval notation for that solution. All right, let's go and take a look at one more example and let's have a little bit of fun. So I said it's going to be average, you know, kind of problems. We're not going to do anything too crazy, but I do want you to kind of like, let's do ones with, you know, has a little bit more work. So in this one, our absolute value has quite a bit of stuff that we need to do to get rid of it, right? And again, a lot of times when students see like so much work here, I just want them to remember like, what if the equation looked like this? What if it was just a 3a, um, not a 3a, what if it was a 3a minus 6 is equal to 24? What would you do? You'd add the 6 and divide by 3, right? So guys, do the exact same thing over here, right? Just isolate the absolute value. Undo everything that's happening to the absolute value, right? We don't need to worry about the inequality at the moment. We can worry about the inequality once we need to get rid of the absolute value. For right now, you can just try to treat it like solving an equation or solving a regular inequality. Don't worry about the absolute value. That is what you're trying to isolate. So just like in this example where I would add a six on both sides, I'm going to add a six on both sides over here, right? And so therefore I have a three times absolute value of two X plus three. All right. It's going to be greater than 30. Then I'll say, all right, let's go ahead and divide by three on both sides. So now I have the absolute value of a two X plus three is greater than 10, right? So now I've isolated it. Now I've solved. Okay. And so now you notice this, that you say, all right, so now I got to pick out, well, what is this inequality? That's going to give me the or, right? So when it's less than or less than or equal to, that's an and. When it's greater than or greater than or equal to, that's going to be an or. So now I need to create my two cases. So I can say a 2x plus 3. Sorry, I don't need the absolute value here. Um, I right, ran out of space here. So I say 2x plus 3. Actually, what I can do, mm, no, it's a 2x plus 3 is going to be greater than a 10. And then I can say a 2x plus 3 is going to be less than a, actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and let me see if I can move this over real quick and add in another page. So therefore, I can get a little bit more work. Um, let's see here. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. Now we got more work to work with. Okay. All right. Sweet. So I have a 2x plus 3 is greater than 10, and a 2x plus 3 is, flip the sign, greater than a negative 10, right? So I got to make sure you flip that sign. All right. So I'm going to subtract a 3 on both sides, and therefore I get a 2x is going to be greater than a 7. Divide by 7, divide by a 2. I'm sorry, divide by 2, divide by 2. x is going to be, did I already do a greater than? Yeah, I'm sorry. Let's do a greater than or equal to. Let's change this one up. I guess I forgot to write that in there. Greater than or equal to. Okay. So we're going to do a greater than or equal to. All right. So therefore, this is going to be X is going to be greater than or equal to a seven halves. Okay. Or now let's go and do this side. So I'll subtract the three on both sides. Two X is going to be less than or equal to negative 10 minus three is going to be negative 13. Um, so 
Now I will divide by two, divide by two on both sides, and I get x is going to be less than or equal to a negative 13 over two. Okay, now sometimes again, students have trouble with this because they don't know like how to graph this. And again, like, I don't want you to over like simplify this guys. How many times is two going to seven? It's three times, right? So it's three and some change, right? Three and one third. You can use a decimal equivalent if you want to, but I wouldn't really worry about it. So this is going to be, let's, let's put zero. This is gonna be roughly like right around three, right? Three and some change. So that's gonna be seven halves. All the really point that I wanna to make to is to you then that four is going to be to the right, right? And like anything less than seven halves is gonna to be to the left. What about a negative 13 halves? Well, two goes in negative 13 halves, so like what, six times with the remainder of one, like so negative 6.5. So again, like don't have to overcomplicate this guys, right? So this could be like negative seven, <laughs> just so you kind of get some bearings where things are at. Um, but again, only one of them needs to be true anyway. So we just need to graph X is greater than or equal to seven halves. So that's going to be going this way. Or X is going to be less than or equal to a negative 13 halves. So that's going to be an open circle going that way, right? Oh, I'm sorry, not an open circle. That's less than or equal to. So it needs to be a closed circle. But now we can write this as interval notation, right? From negative infinity. But rather than using parentheses here, this is actually defined, right? It's less than or equal to. So therefore, that's negative 13 halves. And then we're going to use a bracket to say that it's um, defined. And then that's going to be union a seven halves, right? Because that's as far right as the, or as far left as this graph goes, all the way over to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully this video was helpful for you. If it was, then I look forward to seeing you in the next video.